Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. I'm doing a little canning, and I thought I'd share the process with you. But first, I have to do a little business. This is a ball recipe, but it's not an official ball video. This is just me doing some canning, and I don't work for ball, and I don't get anything from ball for doing the video. Just wanted to get that out of the way. This is the Mediterranean potato recipe from the Ball All New Book of Canning and Preserving. I got good reports from friends that this was a yummy recipe, so I had to have it in my pantry. So let's get canning. I'm going to list the ingredients for you in the info section. The recipe is in the Ball All New Book of Canning and Preserving, page 415. So I have here five pounds of potatoes. I weighed them. I've got an, a lemon for lemon zest. I've got some onions. I'm going to use two cups because I'm making a double recipe. I've got peppers. I've got oregano, salt, pepper. I'm also going to use some beef broth, which I don't have pictured here. As I say, I'm making a double recipe. I will list the ingredients for a single recipe. So the first step is to wash and peel these potatoes. Then we're going to cut them. I have some water here and I squeezed half a lemon in it for the juice just to uh, keep the potatoes from discoloring. That's not in the directions, that's just a little thing to do. Now this recipe says that you can have or quarter the potatoes and if you have potatoes that are less than two inches you can can them whole. I took that literally and that means my potatoes vary widely in size. Uh, this one is three inches. If I cut it in half it's going to be less than two inches. So I didn't cut it in half. I've since called ball and found that the potatoes can be as small as half inch cubes which would have been very helpful and would have made a difference in the final product. Next time I'll cut them in one inch cubes. So let's talk a little bit about potatoes and canning. You always peel potatoes and you always make sure you cut out any little spots from the eyes. This is one of those things that's not a preference, it's not about appearance, it's not about taste. It's because the eyes of potatoes can harbor botulism spores. And if you're just cooking potatoes, that's not so important. But if you're canning potatoes, those little nooks and crannies can protect the botulism spores from the heat so they don't get hot enough to kill the spores. So you always peel your potatoes and make sure that any little spots from the eyes are cut away and any little brown spots are cut away. I want to talk a little bit about recipe measurements. The potato measurement is given in pounds. The onion and peppers are given in cups and milliliters. If you're confused as to whether that's a liquid measure or a dry measure in cups, milliliters is a liquid measurement. So I have two cups of onions in a liquid measuring cup. Most measuring cups in the U.S. show milliliters on the other side from the ounces. So if you find that confusing when following a recipe, whether or not you use a liquid or dry measurement, milliliters is always liquid. Grams is weight. Ounces is a dry measurement and fluid ounces is a wet measurement. So I showed you my onions. That's to me a medium dice. We're going to do the peppers here. I'm using green and orange bell peppers because I like the flavor. You can use any peppers you want in canning peppers or peppers. The only thing I'm doing here is I split them open. I washed out the seeds and I'm cutting away the little white membrane. Again, the peppers are listed in cups and milliliters, so that's a liquid measure. Just try to cut them into a uniform diced size. 
Some recipes will specify a size of chunks. This one does not. So I cleaned too many onions and I'm going to put these in the fridge and I'm going to take this opportunity to debunk a myth. It is a total internet myth that you cannot safely store cut onions. It is <coughs> bovine excrement. So everything's cut up. It's time to get our canner ready. This bowl holds three quarts of water. Folks are sometimes confused about how much water. Three quarts is always okay. It won't cover um, a half pint jar. It is plenty for a 90 minute processing time. If you're doing something that goes over 90 minutes like fish, uh, you may add a little bit more just to make sure that it doesn't boil down. But if you guard against siphoning, you won't have that problem. This is a raw pack recipe, so you want to have your water at about 140 degrees. You don't want it hot yet, just 140 degrees. And I do check it with a thermometer. The temperature of the water that comes out of my faucet is 140 degrees approximately. So I'm turning my heat on very low just to maintain that 140 degrees. If I were doing a hot pack recipe, I would heat the water to 180 degrees. All of this is to prevent thermal shock. I almost forgot, I need to zest a lemon. I'm going to need four teaspoons full of lemon zest. It's a little bit hard to measure. It's not crucial that you get it exact. I suspect that the lemon zest is optional in this recipe, but it doesn't say so, so I'm putting it in. You usually get one to two teaspoons full of zest from a lemon, so I'm doing two lemons for this recipe, double recipe. Okay, we're ready to start the canning. I have some jars over here in hot water. You can store them in your canner. My sink and stove are on opposite sides of the kitchen, so I do it differently. I've measured out the rest of my ingredients. I have my rings and lids ready. They have been washed and dried. You do not need to boil them or keep them in hot water. They're just washed and dried. I've got, that's my salt, my oregano, my pepper. I've got my funnel and scoop. On the stove, I have my beef broth heating. I, I don't have the little debubble tool. I just use chopsticks or I'm using this little plastic magnet this time. And that's my jar lifter. Now the directions say to put mix all your dry ingredients. So I drained the water off the potatoes. I'm adding the onions and the peppers and I'll add the other dry ingredients. I did put on a glove for this part because this great big bowl and these big pieces. There goes my lemon zest. I want to mix it with my hands. And I'm just going to stir all this around to mix the lemon zest all through it. There's not a whole lot to explain about this. We're just going to add everything to the bowl and mix it well. So let me explain a little something about the directions in the ball all new book of canning and preserving. This is one of several recipes they've listed as a group and there are group directions for these one jar vegetable combinations on page 415. In one place it says to mix them all together in the bowl and in another place it says to layer them in the jar. So I'm going to attempt both just by making sure that I get uh, as equal as possible an amount of all the ingredients in each jar. This is making four quarts. That would have been a whole lot easier if the potatoes had been in smaller pieces, but we talked about that. I've started filling a jar here and I'll show you one from the beginning in a second. But I'm stuffing the potatoes in as tightly as I can. And you might have to stop and shake the jar a little bit. You want to fill the jar to 
one inch headspace and I measure that with this little funnel which I'll show you you can measure it with your debubble tool or you can measure it with a measuring tape when you get it stuffed in as tightly as you can we're going to add broth I'm using beef broth you can use chicken or vegetable broth that's your preference but we're also going to fill the broth up to one inch then you want to debubble to get the air out now I'm going to mention why the size of the potatoes matters when you're canning raw pack you didn't heat them first the vegetables are full of air naturally and when you heat them they release that air so you've debubbled and you've measured but when you put these raw pack vegetables in the canner and they heat up they're going to release air and the air is going to accumulate at the top of the jar and it's going to look like you've had siphoning when you may not have had siphoning you've just accumulated air from the air that's in the raw vegetables and the bigger pieces hold more air so I've wiped the outside of the jar with vinegar and I've fit the lid on top and the ring on top of that I want to show you what finger tight means I've got the ring it's on my counter put no pressure on it and you see how it turns the jar when it starts to turn the jar stop and then give it just a little bit more finger tight using your fingers not your whole fist so I've started one jar here from scratch and I'm gonna let you watch just one and I took the funnel off for now because it's easier to put them in without it since they're in such big pieces if you're working with bigger pieces like this and you might because you want to make maybe cottage fries out of these or french fries try to fit them in so that you have as little air as possible and they'll sort of fit in like a jigsaw puzzle your goal here is to mix the smaller ingredients in with the potatoes and to leave as little air space as possible you might give the jar a little shake as you go along so that the smaller pieces will go down to the bottom and don't worry about having too much product jammed in the jar with this cut and this raw pack process that's not going to happen so you want to get them down below the one inch mark and we'll check that with our funnel but you can tell it's just below the lower uh, ring there and this funnel measures it so you'll see right there is the one inch mark I love this little funnel by the way and I'm using a regular mouth jar here I'm adding my broth and it's probably going to be easier for you in a wide mouth jar to stuff these jars full so putting the broth in this is why I didn't show you the broth at the beginning I ended up using almost two quarts of broth for this and it doesn't give you an amount in the directions so let's debubble with whichever tool you're using and after you've debubbled you may have to add a little bit more broth it might take it down below the one inch head space and I'm making sure the potatoes themselves are down below the one inch too and I'm taking a paper towel dipped in vinegar and cleaning the rim especially when you're using spices by the way you can get little pieces of spices stuck up there and when I'm done I'll pour the leftover vinegar into the canner just to kind of keep the jars clean so fit your lid on and then your ring 
You know, I always turn my ring backwards a little bit until it seats. And we're show you, I'm going to show you finger tight again. You're turning and the jar moved. So then you put just your fingers around the edge and turn it just a little bit more. No more than a quarter turn. You don't want it too tight. If you get your ring too tight, then the lid can buckle. We're going to put that one in the canner. I had a little of the mixture left here. It's not enough to fill another jar. It's not quite enough to fill a pint jar. I tried it. I'm going to put them in the fridge and have them for dinner. So I have my four quart jars in my canner. My canning heat is on low. It's actually two out of nine. And if you'll notice, I did one jar at a time. That's to keep the temperature consistent between the jars and the water. So we're going to close up my canner. I use an All-American. This one happens to be a 915. And I put all the little bolts up just to make sure everything's lined up properly. Then I tighten all the bolts on opposite sides, two at a time. And when that is done, and only then, turn your heat up. I turn mine up to medium high because I have a high BTU burner. Depending on your stove, you may have to turn it all the way up to high. I recommend you don't turn it up to the highest heat you're going to use until after you get your canner sealed, just for safety reasons. So once I have my canner sealed and my heat turned up, the only job then is to wait until you start getting a steam plume. I'm going to let you listen to this because it's really hard to see, but you'll get a steady plume of steam coming out of this vent pipe. When you do, set your timer for 10 minutes. You want to let your canner fully vent. If you don't, your gauge may not read properly and you may not have the proper pressure. Canners are going to vary. Mine is an All-American and it has both a weighted gauge and a dial gauge. And this weighted gauge shows 5, 10, and 15 pounds. My elevation is just under a thousand feet, so I use the 10 pound marker on the weighted gauge. If you're over a thousand feet, you're going to need to use the 15 pound marker. If you are, I time lapse this, it's been 10 minutes, I'm going to drop my weighted gauge on the stem and now I'm going to wait for it to start to rattle. It should show 11 pounds on the dial gauge when that rattle starts. Different brands of canners have a different kind of rattle or roll or rock. With the All-American it's an actual rattle and you want it to happen somewhere between one and four times a minute. When it starts, you want to turn your canner heat down to what I hope is your predetermined sweet spot. The sweet spot is the lowest possible temperature setting to maintain the proper pressure. The processing time for this recipe is 40 minutes quartz, 35 minutes pint, and my pressure is always 10 pounds at under a thousand feet elevation. I want to make sure to show you what the rattle looks like. You only want it to do this between one and four times a minute. You don't want it to rattle constantly. That means your heat is too high. And at too high a heat, you will lose some of the water, some of the moisture inside the can. So once you're sure you have your pressure regulated, you're at your sweet spot, all you got to do is wait for the timer. When your timer goes off, turn your heat off, and then we'll just wait until the pressure goes down to zero. That usually takes me from 30 to 40 minutes. Now with an All-American, even though my dial gauge is down to zero, I sometimes have just a little bit of heat. A little bit of steam still trapped. 
So I remove my weighted gauge very slowly and carefully just so that little bit of pressure can escape without causing my jars to siphon. Once you take that off, you're going to wait another 10 minutes. Set your timer. We'll be back. After that 10 minutes, we can remove the lid and, oops, that one's kind of tight. I always use a glove to do this because this is very, very hot. So you just unscrew all the bolts on an All-American. And by the way, one of the things about an All-American is that occasionally, not every time, but every three or four times, you need to put a little lubrication uh, inside along the rim of the canner and the um, lid because there's no gasket on an All-American. So once you get it all opened, lift the lid away from you. And I set it over on my counter, letting little drips of water. Now you're going to want to wait another 10 minutes before you take the jars out. If you look in there, they are boiling. Inside the jars, it's boiling. I think the directions say five minutes, but I always leave it 10 because if you take a jar of that hot out and just a little cool breeze hits it, it could cause it to break. So just a little patience. We'll wait 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes using my jar lifter, I'm going to take the jars out. You don't want to set them directly on a hard surface. You can either spread a towel out on your counter. I use this silicone cutting board and we're going to set these carefully not touching each other and we'll let them stay 12 to 24 hours before we remove the rings and to already hear the lids popping that's a beautiful sound when you've worked to get canned food in the jars I want to do a little close-up and an explanation here that jar looks fine the other jar over here, you'll see there's a lot of vegetables up at the top. In the liquid level, it looks kind of low. What you have is fruit, is vegetables floating. This is not siphoning, and I'll show you why I tell you it's not siphoning. This jar just had a lot of air trapped in the vegetables, that one too. And as time goes, as it cools off, the vegetables will go down. This is not siphoning, and I'm going to show you why it's not siphoning. You see this water? It's absolutely clean. So I've let them sit for 12 hours and removed the rings. This is the finished product. These are all safely sealed. If you had one that didn't seal, you can put it in the fridge, use it right away, or you can reprocess it. Although with potatoes, I really don't suggest that. They'll just get really mushy. I'll wash and dry these jars before I store them away. I'll be making this recipe again. My plan is to have a dozen jars on the shelf. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. Hope to see you again tomorrow.